Hey guys, how's it going? Sorry I haven't made a video for a while. I know my videos have been few in between here, but uh, I thought that I need to share something with you. So I just want to go over a couple of verses. This is kind of like nothing really official. I'm still working on these things, but I mentioned this paper that I read, this magazine, and um, in a video how it talks about the futurist teaching of the millennial kingdom on earth, the thousand year reign of Christ on earth, you know, the literal physical kingdom of God that is false. And <clears throat> anyways, I mentioned there was like a couple pages and some verses that I wanted to, to go over more in detail. And I started looking at it more and I went back further and it's actually longer than I thought. It's like five pages or something. And it starts here and it says, prepare to inherit the earth. And so there's a couple of the verses here at the beginning that, that were interesting that I'm not sure if I've heard before used by futurists or not. I may have and forgotten. But I thought that maybe these are kind of important to talk about a little bit. And uh, so I'll do that. One of them is, let's see here, basically... Matthew chapter 5 verse 5 which says blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth and um, they got the whole they got the, the um, a group of three verses there Matthew chapter 5 5 through 7 and these are the the beatitudes the beatitudes <laughs> I don't know if I'm saying that right but I need to do a study on that the whole the sermon on the mount but Anyways, they got, you know, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Now here's what this paper says. It says, notice carefully, did Jesus say that the poor in spirit would go to heaven while the meek would inherit the earth? No, he said that the poor in spirit would be blessed with the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven will come to the earth when Christ returns. That is when the saved will be resurrected and will inherit the kingdom. Okay, now, those verses didn't say anything like that. So we need to realize that, first of all, when we're going to understand Matthew chapter 5, verse 5, which says, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. We need to understand, first of all, when we're going to consider an interpretation of this verse, that the, the futurist uh, interpretation, that this is speaking of a future physical, literal, thousand-year reign on earth, um, it's nowhere to be found there in that verse, okay? So we can just rule out that first thing, um, because you would have to be, you know, adding to that, you would have to be assuming or, um, I can't think of the right words, I don't know. Anyways, you know, it says, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. It doesn't say that they shall rule and reign with Christ physically, literally, for a thousand years on the earth. Okay, it says they shall inherit the earth. And um, so what people would do, who, who the futurists, uh, what I would believe they would do is go to Revelation 20, you know, where it says uh, that, you know, the saints rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years. But in that passage, it doesn't say that they rule and reign on the earth for a thousand years. And anyways, Revelation is, you know, it's an allegory. It's all symbolic. So that verse doesn't teach a physical, literal, thousand-year kingdom on the earth. Okay, but that's the main go-to text. And then, see, they would have to, they'd have to use that. They'd say, okay, you know, let me, I've got this page in front of me where I'm working on the millennial kingdom so I can actually read the verse. Let me see. It's uh, Revelation 20. Basically, let's see. Hmm. Okay. So Revelation 24, Revelation chapter 20, verse 4 says, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. They lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. It doesn't say on the earth. And like I said, besides, this is all, you know, that's basically, I think, speaking of the afterlife, 
a uh, thousand years is symbolic and you know it's, it's all an allegory so but an important thing to notice to, to point out to futurist people is that it doesn't say that they will live uh, that they will reign with Christ a thousand years on the earth okay and so they'll go to other verses like this, like Matthew chapter 5, verse 5, which says, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And they'll see like, oh, see there it says they shall inherit the earth. This is talking about the same thing. But it's it's not. Okay? <laughs> they're, they're not connected at, at all. Okay? Um, so there's there's no reason to believe that. And, and neither one of them are teaching what the, the people are trying to teach. You know, because the Revelation 20 passage, the verse doesn't say that they'll rule and reign on the earth. And this, uh, Matthew 5, verse 5, doesn't say anything about a thousand years of a physical, literal kingdom or anything like that. Okay. So they need to be understood separately in their own separate context, what they're referring to, how to be interpreted. And so I've searched, uh, you know, this kind of stumped me a little bit. You know, it's like, you know, how, how can I understand this and I've looked and there's maybe a few different popular interpretations but I found one that I really like that seems kind of true to me and I think it was actually from John Piper I know it was from his website Desiring God he's a Calvinist and has a lot of problems but I think they might be right on this one um, he shared this passage that says um, well he says, I think basically like each of these things where Jesus says, you know, blessed are the poor, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, blessed are they that the mourn. Uh, you know, what he says after is to encourage us to, um, to, you know, to stay humble or whatever it says. You know, this says... Matthew chapter 5, verse 5, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. So, you know, how does uh, knowing that we will inherit the earth, or that we do inherit the earth, um, how does that keep us meek? And so, he shares this passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18 through 23, which says, Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool, that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God, for it is written, He hath, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. All things are yours. Whether Paul, or Apollos, or Cephas, or the world, or life, or death, or things present, or things to come, all are yours, and ye are Christ, and Christ is God. So it says in verse 21, Therefore let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. And so John Piper basically says, uh, you know, why should we brag about, you know, a house we own or whatever, earthly things, when, uh, you know, being a child of God, we possess everything. You know, we inherit the earth and everything in it, you know, because the the earth and the fullness of it is the Lord's, and because we are with the Lord, we are Christ, and Christ is God's, then we inherit those blessings. That's what it. That's what it means. That's that's the best explanation that I see. Um, so, and you know, a lot more could be said about that. Like I said, I'm just kind of going over these things. I just want to make a video and share this with you. Something I've been thinking about. But I keep jumping back and forth to different studies and stuff. But I just I wanted to note that Matthew chapter 5, verse 5, how futurists will try to use that to teach a millennial kingdom. doesn't teach any such thing. Bless, you know, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. It doesn't talk about a thousand-year physical, literal reign kingdom on the earth. Um, and, you know, they're going to try to puzzle together all these pieces systematically, all these verses to say that, oh, see, these all teach, you know, this doctrine or whatever, and it doesn't. Um, but one other thing that I found interesting is 
Matthew chapter 6, verse 10, which says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Oh, it says kingdom there, thy kingdom come. So this is what this paper says. It says, Jesus taught us to pray your kingdom come in Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. Was he asking us to pray for something that to come that is already here? If the kingdom is here, then why has the world experienced such horror as two great world wars of the first century, as well as the terrible genocides carried out against the Armenians, Jews, Cambodians, and many others? Even today, peace continues to evade us. As Mikhail Gorbachev, former president of the Soviet Union, recently said, it all looks as if the world is preparing for war. Time.com, January 26, 2017. Yes, the world needs God's kingdom to come. Christ taught that there would be great tribulation before his kingdom would come. How, how severe would the tribulation be? Uh, you know, anyways, I'm not going to read on. But they totally take that verse out of context, okay? Now I've tried to look over and see how can I explain this to... Um, oh, man. Wow. So I think basically from my understanding, thy kingdom come, it's kind of like we're praying for uh, God's kingdom to come into its fullness and so what that entails is that more souls would be saved, you know, that more would turn to Christ and um, obey him. You know, that's, that's how we pray for his kingdom to come, for it to come in its, in its fullness, um, you know, for it to, to grow. Um, that's what I see. You know. It obviously doesn't have anything to do, again, with the physical, literal, thousand-year reign of Christ. You know, um, <laughs> it's just it's just crazy how they interpret that. You know, they say, was he asking us to pray for something to come that is already here? If the kingdom is here, then why has the world experienced such horrors? <laughs> um, so, they don't... Uh, you know, they totally missed the mark here. Your kingdom come. So they think that 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 we should be praying for God's kingdom, this millennial kingdom to start, you know. But basically, um, you know, I'm sure that they teach the rapture and the seven-year tribulation and all of that stuff, you know, like I've said before, so... A lot of people would have to be praying for the rapture to come, or they would have to be praying for you know a third temple to be built. That's what a lot of people, these futurists, do because they think that you know there has to be a third temple built and then everything can start. Uh, so that's what they're really praying to to happen. Um, which you know I've read a website too that I should go over again. I need to find it. A good article and it was like you know as Christians should we really be praying for like uh, you know a pagan like temple to be <laughs> created so like uh, you know Jews can carry on with their Judaism or whatever um, and you know no I don't think that we should be uh, but anyway uh, but, you know, praying for God's kingdom to come is f praying for, you know, uh, the gospel to reach further and to be preached and for more souls to be saved. And uh, I think that's basically it. And I really need to do a study on the, the Lord's Prayer and just go over that whole thing. That would be really good and needful. So I think that I've just had a lot of time in this video just stalling. And so, so I hope that if anybody watched this that you got something out of that. But I'll go over these things in more detail in the future. i got to look at them. And, you know, I've been working on so many different studies. i got so many different things here. Uh, just unbelievable. You know, I jumped from, like, one thing to the next, and I got all these papers, like hundreds of pages that I printed out. <laughs> you know, this is new stuff, not the stuff that I already have the whole file cabinet full of. So... Yeah, I want to make some really good studies that I've been working on. I just It's been hard for me to stay focused, and I still haven't heard from Dollar General going on like almost four weeks now. So uh, I'm trying to figure out that, but 
I'll be getting my license soon, regardless, you know, another six weeks or so, and uh, just taking it day by day and hope that I can, I'll start making more videos, if, if anything, just make some short videos just to say things, but trying to work on some really good ones, just being a little slow about it, but I've been working on the website a lot as always, and I'm adding all the, basically I'm adding the whole Bible on the website, which has taken some time, because... Uh, so I can do commentary, verse-by-verse -verse commentary, expository, throughout the whole Bible. You know, I added the New Testament, and now I'm going through the Old Testament. I've done all the major prophets. I'm working on the minor prophets, and then I'll probably do, like, the historical books. And, you know, then Psalms, that's going to be probably the last one that I'll do, because, you know, it's 100 chapters, so many chapters. That'll That'll take a while. That'll be a big challenge, but... It's needed. It needs to be done. So, you know, once I have the whole Bible on there to to easily do verse by verse commentary, it'll be pretty awesome. So, I was just going to be content with the New Testament for a while, but I was like, no, I just I need to just finish and do the whole Bible. So, anyways, thanks for watching. God bless.